So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to sandblast type, so to speak, inside Adobe Photoshop. And there's a couple different examples, and this is the thumbnail for the video that I made. So this example has the sandblasting effect that looks much more subtle, and there's also a different way of doing it where the sandblast effect looks much more pronounced, where the entire thing just looks more grainy. And the difference there is just the size of the document that you make. So this example that I have on my screen right now was made at, I believe it's 1280 by 720, which is the default YouTube thumbnail size. And the example above is in a document that was 3000 pixels wide by 1500 pixels high. And as you can see, the dots of the grain there are just much more small. So do be thoughtful with the size of the document that you create because it will have a pretty big impact on the overall appearance. And essentially, if you make something way too big, you can scale it down to be smaller. But when you scale stuff really small to get the much more grainy effect, you obviously can't make that really big without losing quality. And the cool thing about this effect is it doesn't require any special brushes. It's all very default stuff in Photoshop. So we can just basically get going. And as I get going as well, the font that I used to create this is called Archival Black. So I will link that in the description if you want to download that before you continue onwards. Basically, a really big, bold font like this just works really well for the font, although I'd expect that this would also work awesome on silhouettes or even script fonts that are a bit more bold in nature. And for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do one letter, and this document is 1500 by 1500 pixels, so we'll see how that looks in terms of the scaling. But just to get going, I'm going to start by hitting T on my keyboard to select the type tool. I'm also just changing my fill color to black so it'll be really easy to see. And then I'm going to click on the screen to start typing, and I'm just going to type a letter S. So there is that letter. I'm going to hit Control T on my keyboard to scale this up to be much larger. You could change the font size too. It doesn't really matter how you do this. But basically just get your type typed out however it is you want it to be. And once it's scaled and set, we can go on to the next step. So in the layers palette, I'm just gonna click on the type where the letter S is shown. And then I'm gonna hit Control J on a PC or Command J on a Mac to duplicate that layer. And then I'm going to hit the eyeball in the layers palette to hide the original. And then on the copy or the one that we just duplicated, I'm going to right click or Control click if you don't have a right click button. And from that menu, I'm going to go to rasterize type because the type or whatever object it is you're doing is going to have to be rasterized before we do this. And then also in the layers window right here, I'm gonna change the blend mode, which is normal by default. So you should see a box that says normal. Just click on that and change it to dissolve, which is how we're going to make this overall effect. And once you have that blending mode set to dissolve, I'm going to go to the bottom of the layers palette and there is a button that looks kind of like a rectangle with a circle misking in the middle and that's to add a layer mask. So I'm gonna click that, which will create this layer mask in the layers palette next to the type that we had. And then just make sure that you click on that layer mask so it's selected and not your, your layer where the actual type is. So just to the right, click on that. And then next up, you're gonna to wanna to hit B on your keyboard to select the brush or you can go to your toolbar and select the brush from there as well. And a couple settings that you're gonna to wanna to change. Under opacity, for this particular style, I've used 20%. By default, that'll be 100%. So just change that to about 20%. And then when you click on the actual brush right here in the menu, set the hardness to 0%. And basically, when it comes to making the sand blast effect, it makes it much more diffused. So that's why you don't want 100% hardness. You want this to look more natural as if it's spraying out from a center point. So just go ahead and change those. And then next up, make sure your fill color is set to black. If you hit D on your keyboard, it'll reset the color to be black by default. Alternatively, you can click it. Just make sure it's black because we're gonna be using this on the mask that we just made. So essentially you wanna scale up your brush until it takes up the majority of the overall size of the letter. And I just hit my bracket keys. So the left bracket key will make the brush smaller. The right bracket key will make the brush larger. It's a really fast way to scale the brush. So just hit those as you go along and kind of follow these steps. That's exactly what I'll be doing. And basically once you get the brush a good size to fit inside your shape, just start clicking, holding, and then dragging around where this is the very first of the overall sandblast style effect. And I like to have it so it kind of covers the edges 
fairly consistently like what you see right here. But if you start with a smaller brush, it'll basically just not go out to the edges quite as much. So that's an alternative style that you can go ahead and do this. I tend to like to start fairly large, but up to you how you want to do this overall. So I'm just gonna make this slightly larger and I'm just clicking and holding and sort of drawing around this with my mouse. But if you have a pen tablet, that'd be a fantastic way of doing this too. So I just did that in a single pass, but you can go over it a second time if you need to. But I tried to not make this too dark on the edges because it will make it more difficult to see the type overall. And then once you get this to a good point where you think it's well covered, I then just make my brush smaller and I do a second pass inside, which will start to make the interior look even more light while the outside looks much more diffused in comparison. So I did that in a single click as well. And of course, if you see some edges where you want to do some additional spray there, so to speak, you can make your brush bigger. Just do like a single click outside on those edges and you'll see that it covers it a little bit. But essentially from this point, you just keep making your brush smaller and then doing additional passes. And once my brush gets about this size, I just click and hold and sort of drag and do that over and over again. So I'm clicking all the time. You might hear it on my microphone, but I'm just essentially painting in this portion in the center to make it look much more pronounced than what it did. And I just keep on doing that until I get to a point where I'm pretty happy with the overall effect. And basically when you click hold and then just drag really fast and do that over and over again, it's really helpful in these center portions if you want them to look fairly white. Alternatively, you can keep this looking much more sparse. This is all stylistic preference at this point. So just keep going around your entire object until you get it looking roughly the way that you want. You can also go back and just enlarge this a little bit if you want to recast or recover some of these areas to look a little bit more shaded. And that should be pretty much it. I'm not gonna go super crazy on this for the purpose of this tutorial, but I think this is a pretty good starting point. And then for the very last step, and this is also totally personal preference, to make the overall edges look a bit more consistent with the complete letter, I just go to filter and then blur and then Gaussian blur. And then I'll set this to a radius that just makes those edges look much more soft than the harsh black line that they had before. So totally personal preference if you wanna do this or not. I'll just hit this preview checkbox so you can see the before and then the after. This makes it look almost like the entire letter is made out of sand, or this one looks much more like a typical distress that is going on inside there. So I did a 5.4 pixel radius, but totally personal preference in terms of how you want this to look. I'll hit OK. And then finally, what I'll do is I'll hit Control J while this layer is selected, or Command J if you're on a Mac. Like I said before, that just duplicates this layer. So we have a copy. I like to maintain copies because then I can go back to the original and you can turn that mask on and off in case you wanted to go back in here and make some changes. And also something I didn't say before, if you have white in the foreground as opposed to the background and also hitting X on your keyboard will switch the colors between foreground and background. So in this case, between black and white. But when white is in front and you have that mask selected, painting over your object will then just remove portions of that mask. So if you wanna go back in here and make things look much more subtle, you can go ahead and do that by just painting back over it in white with that brush. But I'm gonna turn that off by clicking the eyeball and bring this one on. And because this is set to dissolve layer mode, we don't wanna leave it like that forever. So to make this so it looks the same while being a normal blending mode as opposed to dissolve, where if I did that right now, you can see that this just looks kind of odd. This is the overall colors that we painted there. So setting this back to dissolve, I'm going to click on the overall layer where this entire thing lives. And then I'm going to right click or control click if you don't have a right click button and then go to convert to smart object, which is about a third of the way down on the menu. And doing that will allow us to change this from dissolve back to normal. And you can see when I did that, it maintained this overall style. So that's a really quick and easy way to do that. And then you could actually have this on any document and resize it in any sort of way. And it will maintain that same look as opposed to if you have it set to dissolve and you make it much smaller, you can see already that these dots are becoming much more pronounced. It looks much more rough. And that's just the nature of the way that this particular process works with the dissolve blending mode. But this is really almost it when it comes to this. So the final step that I did, and this isn't a requirement, this is totally, if you want this to look a bit more soft, a bit more natural, you can go to filter and then blur and then Gaussian blur. And you're going to want to make the Gaussian blur very small. 
I found out that 0.3 is the smallest you can make it. And I'll just toggle on this preview on and off so you can see the difference. Essentially that slight blur makes this seem much more realistic as opposed to this really super pixely look. I think this, is, this just looks much better. And if I make that 0.2, it doesn't seem to do much of anything, but 0.3 is kind of that magic number for me at least. So I'm going to hit OK. And because this is a smart object, you can also turn that Gaussian blur on or off at any point in time by just clicking on the eyeball so you can see what it looks like before and after. And if I wanted to make this letter a different color, I can go to the FX button in the bottom and then go to Color Overlay, which will just make this a really easy overlay. And you can make it whatever color you want by clicking that box and going through the color picker and changing it to be whatever color you want it to be. But that's really it for this tutorial. And basically when I went through and did all these letters, I would do the big brush on every one and then make the brush a little bit smaller and then do that on every single letter just to make it as consistent as possible so that these felt pretty similar. And then it's up to you how you want to go in here and create that custom effect on a background. In this case, I use a sand background because this is about a sandblasting style effect. And I also have a drop shadow applied to this. So if you want to also apply a drop shadow on your type, you can just select that type layer, then go to the FX button, go to drop shadow, where I'm just looking on my screen. It's at the very, very bottom of the menu. Click on drop shadow. And then what I tend to do is set the blend mode to multiply, which works great if you're using it on some sort of a background, it'll multiply or essentially make the color look much more natural on almost anything you put it on. You can change the angle, you can change the distance of that. So up to you if you want to use a drop shadow, but totally easy to do. And because that is an effect that we applied to this, you can turn that on or off by hitting the eyeball. And you can also just click on it twice to bring up that menu and change it at any point in time. But that's it for this video. I do hope that you found it helpful. And if you did find it helpful, feel free to hit the thumbs up button to like the video and let me know that you liked it. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing. I do my best to keep creating new content just like this. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.